Do you ever have that sense of deja vu, like you've been in a certain place before? Well, Raging Loop takes that, along with the concept of Groundhog Day, 80s slasher creature flicks, the game of werewolf or mafia depending on what you call it, and anime visual novels, and combines it all together into, so far, one of my favorite visual novels. Now, before we go further in, the reason this is a thoughts episode instead of a full-on review is because while I did get to the first true ending in the game, it is far from over. See, the point of Raging Loop is to lose until you win, and I will talk about that more in a bit. The story of Raging Loop is that of mistrust, heavy beliefs, the fear of the unknown, and the miscommunication between fellow man. But past even that, it's about not giving up hope and finding the truth to what is actually going on in the small, out-of-time town you stumble across after stopping by a shady convenience store and a motor bicycle accident. After being aided by an overly spunky girl and brought back to her seemingly abandoned housing complex, the two of you proceed to get drunk and joke around as to what the other person might horribly be in truth. The next morning, after a tense exploration of the village down the hill, you begin to meet the offbeat residents that reside here one by one. Slowly, you are introduced to the cast of characters and the ever-growing list of soon-to-be victims, unless there is something an outsider like you can do. Of course, there isn't, right? It's not like every time you die, you get to reset back to the point of arrival like some sort of manga hero. That would just be silly. But that's just what happens, as after the first time you die a grisly death at the supernatural hands of a wolf-like creature, you are sent back to restart it all, memories of the axe still intact. With this power you've been gifted, you're going to die a heck of a lot to try and solve what is even going on in the seemingly cursed town, try to save the people you care about, and put an end to the evil that resides here. One thing I really liked about the story is that while there definitely seems like some supernatural stuff is going on, nothing confirms or denies it until much later in the story. Things could be totally explained if you think about it. Perhaps the fact that the village dumps the corpses of those who died in the river and is poisoning everyone and driving them insane. Or maybe there are chemicals in the air and the fog. Or it could very well be a werewolf sent by God. That's the beauty of Raging Loop. You're not going to get your questions answered too quickly, and when you do get them answered, more arise and keep you invested in these people's lives. And just because things can be reset, that doesn't mean seeing these likable souls be extinguished each loop won't hurt, because it will. A lot. That's all I'm going to say about the story for now. It's better to just experience it for yourself and ignore any trailers or other reviews, as most others, and even some of the promotional material, spoil some of the earlier scares and important scenes. Honestly, how everything is set up is pretty darn perfect. There's no reception, but the village does have a telephone that quickly gets dispatched. The protagonist could have gotten his bike towed and picked up, but it was going to cost him an arm and a leg before, well, he gets trapped in the village. Everything makes sense as to why you are trapped in the slowly evolving hell around you. The first First true run of the game before everything kicks in properly will take you a little under 10 or so hours. But that's just the first true loop, not counting deaths you may encounter earlier. Each time you die, you might be rewarded with a key to unlock other events essential to the plot and continuing on with the story. Thankfully, you get a helpful chart that will let you teleport back to any choice you may need to and hop around the story with ease. No need to use precious time to reread stuff you might not need. This was a great quality of life feature that the game presented. It also adds gameplay to something that would just be considered a novel. The cast of the characters is simply wonderful, and while I have been referring to the protagonist as you, he really does have a character himself, and a great one of that. You play as Haruhaki Fusaishi, a medical student of some sort with a mysterious past. He's not squeaky clean as a character, but he does the right thing and is all around a good guy. While you sometimes do make choices for him, he has his own thoughts on what is happening, character relations, and other things. However, it doesn't stop you, the player, from stepping into his shoes and having your own thoughts and feelings on what all is going on. The second most important character to the story is the tomboy by the name of Chiemi Sirizawa, one of the few seemingly normal people in the community who starts to show cracks in her character and a past full of secrets. Chiemi seems like one of the few genuinely trustworthy and good souls out of the cast, but while my trust in her never wavered, trust is always on a tight rope of a line in the narrative. The rest of the cast is filled out with unique cliches. Everyone fit their role of a genre B-movie, but they were so much more than that and felt like real people I got to know and put stake in their lives. The cast was made up of the bespeckled student who was the leader of the youth, the cross-dressing and eccentric savant, the clean freak daughter of one of the town's elders, the religious nut elder, the troublemaking punk youth, the rich and selfish manor owner, the rough and tough leader, the strong muscle-bound second-in-command, the maternal cook and village caregiver, the mysterious priestess, the crazy doom-saying old man, the child, and the other two outside reporters stuck here as well. Even if the character doesn't have the most on-screen time, like the rude convenience store worker who hints at more, you still get a feel and grasp of everyone and who they are, and grow to not want to 
see any harm come to them. I didn't want to see a single soul die, but no one is safe, and you're going to get your heart broken a lot. At this point, it shouldn't surprise you that I think the writing for the game is brilliant, but let me just confirm that yes, the writing is phenomenal and extremely well crafted. Even the humor here, when it did happen, was really funny, or at least caused me a smile, and the few references to real world things like video games or movies felt in place. Also, while there was humor, it never detracted from the horror. The horror always felt like it was looming in the background, and never really gave you that moment of rest or relief. While there were moments of calm, eh, they quickly diminished to less and less as the story progressed. The game is beautiful and utterly atmospheric. Everything from the character portraits to the backgrounds to the CGs were all stunning to behold. Not a single piece of art looked even the slightest bit amateurish or bad. Each character portrait was perfect for who they were for, and I was never bored with anything visually. Speaking of visuals, while the game was extremely graphic at points, it was more due to the sickening and stomach-churning writing and not so much the visuals of any kind. Sure, there were some visual stimulation with red splatters on a black screen and hints at carnage, but it really comes from the crafted sentences of Viscera. Also, some of the on-screen visuals for the horror elements, while I'm not showing them here for obvious reasons because I don't want them spoiled, actually chilled my blood and made my skin crawl. There were some really legitimately creepy moments that I honestly didn't expect the game might have. While the werewolf is a bit generic looking, his presence slowly grew to be more and more intimidating and ominous and actually made me feel really unnerved by the presence of it. Sure, a wolf man is not necessarily the scariest, but here, with the fact that no one was safe, yeah, it got really scary. Like the visuals, the sound is at moments an oddly creeping calm, and at other times is the breathtaking sound of absolute terror. The soundtrack fit every moment it was in, and all the music was beautifully composed. The voice acting was top-notch and gave the characters an even more natural human feeling. But if you're expecting any English voice acting, it's not here. It's all Japanese, so sorry people who want to dub. Also, some of the death sounds and other sound effects were really sickening and unnerving. And with all that said, please, if you're interested in the game, just go pick up a copy digitally or physically, ignore the internet, don't Google about it, and just give it a read. Turn off the lights, get some of the drink, and enjoy the evening. It's atmospheric, it's immersive, and I went in blind, and I am so thankful that I didn't have any of the first arcs spoiled for me. A huge thank you to the lovely folks over at PQ for sending me a copy of the game to talk about on the show. As always, their Twitter will be linked down below in the description. And if you're interested, please go pick up Raging Loop on Switch or PS4, since the game definitely deserves your support. Sadly, however, if you're wanting to play it on PC, there is no English translation. It's only on consoles at the moment. As always, if you want to help support the channel, please consider sharing the video with a friend or checking out my Patreon linked in the description below. If you have any comments, questions, or recommendations, leave them down below as I read and reply to everything. Until next time, this is Theory Williamson signing off until the next video. See you guys!